Introductions for narrative writing. When we, to, when we talk about introductions for narrative writings, think about introductions when you meet a new person. The first thing you say to them, the first actions you have, those are your first, their first impressions of who you are. And you want to use that time to impress them and to hopefully continue more interactions with them. And the exact same thing is true for your narrative piece. It's your chance to get your audience interested in what it is you're writing about, and it's your chance to introduce the setting, the main character, the plot, any important background information uh, for them to have. And it's usually the first paragraph of your piece, but it can be more, up to a chapter or less, only one sentence. And again, your goal is to use your introduction to show your piece is worth reading more of and to draw your audience in. And the five different introductions we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about describing the setting, describing the main character, telling an event, having dialogue between characters, and character thought, reflection, or internal dialogue. Describing the setting is your chance to let your audience know where and when your story takes place, and it's useful for stories that take place in otherworldly locations, so maybe... Um, you know, if it's not happening on Earth or if it's not happening in, an, in a time period that your audience is aware of, this is your chance to set them straight on that. It's also great to introduce a bit of the plot or introduce if the, if the setting is vital to the plot, getting the setting out there first so that they can follow along and understand that what's going on in the rest of the story. An example of this is in Rodzina by Karen Cushman. And the first paragraph, that story reads... On a cold Monday morning in March, when a weak, pale sun struggled to shine and ice glistened in the cracks in the wooden street, a company of some 22 orphan children with stiff new clothes and little cardboard suitcases boarded a special railway car at the station near the Chicago River. And this paragraph does a great job of telling me, as the audience member, when this is taking place, where this is taking place, and then it also kind of ties the plot in as we talk about some orphan children, we kind of get a general idea of what's going to be happening as we continue to read along. And so I know just based on this that this is in March, so it's cold weather. It's happening near the Chicago River, so I know that location. And there's another clue that doesn't, spec it doesn't specifically say, but it implies, based on when they say the sentence, or the part of the sentence, a company of some 22 orphan children with stiff new clothes and little cardboard suitcases well, immediately I'm thinking, that's not 2011. This is, this is not the same time period. And so that right there helps me to understand a little bit more of the setting. Another option, as we said earlier, was describe the main character. And here is your chance to make connections between your main character and your audience. So you'll read a lot of stories where they, the, what we learn about the main character immediately will draw the intended audience into the piece. And this is a great way to introduce your piece when your main character is unique or when your character is going to experience something throughout the plot, throughout the story, that causes him or her to change or challenges the main character's beliefs and values. And an example of this is in Harry Potter, the third, or the, yeah, the third book, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling. And it starts with, Harry Potter was a highly unusual boy in many ways. For one thing, he hated summer holidays more than any other time of year. For another, he really wanted to do his homework, but was forced to do it in secret in the dead of night. And he also happened to be a wizard. So immediately, right here with this piece, with this introduction, the audience, the intended audience, school-aged children, are drawn in because they can relate to Harry, but in a way that says, wow, he is unusual, he is a strange guy. He likes summer hot or he hates summer holidays. He loves doing his homework. So that helps your audience connect to the main character. But then there's that last sentence, which then leads us into the rest of the piece. And he also happened to be a wizard, which is obviously what the rest of this piece is about. And it draws some excitement from the audience. Ooh, I want to learn more. So this is a great example of describing the main character as an introduction. A third option is telling an event, and a great way of capturing your audience's attention is to tell an event. Get into the action, get the audience revved up about your piece, and in the event you can introduce characters, you can introduce the setting, and you can introduce the plot, and you can do all of that at one time if you choose. 
it's a great way to set up any action adventure stories and it can work in any other type of narrative as well. Here's an example of telling an event. This is from Room 1, A Mystery or Two by Andrew Clements. Ted Hammond huffed and puffed as he pedaled up the small hill on the road back into town. Every morning he rode his bike to the junction of Route 92 and County Road 7 and picked up a bundle of the Omaha World Tribune. And between 7.30 and 8.30, rain or shine, summer or winter, Ted delivered the news. And again, right here, we are learning a little bit about the character through this event. We're learning some of the plot through this event. And we're learning some of the location, so the setting in this event. Another great way of introducing all three of those at once. Another, the fourth option, is dialogue. And this is another way, another great way to introduce characters, the setting, and the plot all at one time. Uh, depending on what you want the audience to hear, you can include it in the dialogue. And it's also great for giving background information that might be important to the rest of the piece. So if something happened previously, so before the story started, and you don't want to go into great detail about that, giving all the explicit, you know, here's what happened, here's when it happened, you can have a simple conversation between your audience mem uh, between your characters that can tell your audience what happened previously. Example from this is from Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. It starts out with Fern, the daughter, asking the mother or talking to the mother about something that's happening. Where's Papa going with that axe? said Fern to her mother as they were setting the table for breakfast. Out to the hog house, replied Mrs. Arable. Some pigs were born last night. I don't see why he needs an axe, continued Fern, who was only eight. Well, said her mother, one of the pigs is a runt. It's very small and weak, and it will never amount to anything. So your father has decided to do away with it. And this introduction continues, this conversation continues, giving us more information about what's going to happen throughout the piece. So more information about the plot for the story. And again, we're introduced to characters. We've got Fern, her mother, Mrs. Arable, and her father. We find out Fern's only eight years old, and they live on a farm. There's some pigs involved. Continue reading that story, and you'll find out what happens. The final, uh, the final introduction we're going to talk about today is character thought, reflection, or internal dialogue. This is probably one of the trickiest to write really well, and it, because it takes such a solid understanding of your main character, you have to be able to introduce the character. You have to know your character well enough to to know what your character would think in a certain situation and reflect on it and even have internal dialogue. But if you can do this one well, it's a tremendous potential for introducing the main character, the setting, the plot, any background information is important for your audience, and it's, it's just a very powerful way of introducing a story. An example from this is from Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the Sea, the sea of Monsters, which is the second book, and it begins with my nightmare started like this. I was standing on a deserted street in some little beach town. It was the middle of the night. A storm was blowing. Wind and rain ripped at the palm trees along the sidewalk. And it continues. Then I heard hooves clattering against the pavement. I turned and saw my friend Grover running for his life. Yeah, I said hooves. Grover is a satyr. From the waist up, he looks like a typical gangly teenager with a peach fuzz goatee and a bad case of acne. Baggy jeans and fake feet hide the fact that he's got furry hindquarters and hooves. And so you can see right there, I took some parts out, but general idea from this introduction, we start to learn about some characters. We get to learn that this isn't, you know, your typical, your typical story about a, a, a normal teenager. Um, and as you continue reading, it introduces some other parts of the story that'll help you be drawn in if you haven't been already. And because it's a series, it, it's a little different than if it were just one book, but same idea. And so here are some do's and don'ts from what we talked about. Do get straight to some action. Don't bore your audience with, lecture, with lengthy descriptions or useless information carrying on and on. Do show your audience what your piece is going to be about through introducing the plot along with your character setting or both at the same time. Don't tell your audience what your story is going to be about. And we've talked about the difference between showing versus telling, and telling is extraordinarily boring. And do use your introduction to get your audience to want to read more. Remember, it's the first impression. When you pick up a book, you read that first page or two, and that can tell you right there how interested or how, how, lack, how 
uninterested you are in the story. So the next time you have your piece in front of you, do some revising, read your introduction, and decide if it has what it takes to, to make your audience be impressed and want to continue reading. And if not, make some changes.